everyone. I'm Jasmine Brooks, and you're watching CBS 21 News live from Jubilee Day. And I'm Joel D. Smith. Looks great out there right now. We're going to get back to Jasmine in just a moment, but we are still watching everything out here, right? Taking a look at the bridges, the current conditions. This is a weather worn day here at CBS 21, so we want to get a feel for what could happen soon. Meteorologist Ed Russo here with the details. Ed. Hey, Joel. Yeah, we've already gotten started with the severe weather threat today. Some thunderstorms earlier this afternoon breaking out right across Franklin County, but they've kind of fallen apart. And now we see a big cluster across central Maryland and northern Virginia. But the second round of storms that we're watching is up here across northwest Pennsylvania. So we're talking about the north central mountains pretty much southwest right into the Virginia, West Virginia Panhandle, the Pittsburgh area. So you see all these orange boxes. Those are ongoing severe thunderstorm warnings, and this line is going to continue dropping southeast towards central PA. See, Harrisburg's over here. So we've still got a bit of time yet. I don't think it's probably going to start rocking and rolling around here, maybe until 7 o'clock. So it's going to hold off until uh, the mid-evening hours. So there, I put the storms into motion, and these are pretty big storms. They've already dropped some uh, significant hail, some wind damage in the northwest part of the state, all of central Pennsylvania, including much of the northern part of the state, under a tornado watch. Now this goes until 11 o'clock this evening, but once that line is passed, the severe weather threat should drop. But these are the storms, uh, storm reports we've seen already. So damage, wind damage reports in Erie County, Warren County, even over towards Crawford County and those little ice pellets. Those are large hail reports seen across parts of Northwest Pennsylvania. So the greatest risk area in red, that means the highest probability for damaging wind gusts. We're going to break down all the threats for you coming up in my full weather forecast in just a few minutes. Joel D. All right, sounds good. This is one of those days. This can be a valuable resource for you. Remember, folks, stay ahead of the storm with the free CBS 21 weather app. Go to your phone's app store and just search CBS 21 WX. All right, let's go live to Capitol Hill where the pressure on Vice President Pence to overturn the election. That was the focus of today's January 6th hearing. Lawmakers are also examining more of the chaotic events surrounding the January 6th attack. Sinclair's chief political correspondent Scott Thuman shows us some of the most dramatic moments and how red flags over security fears were ignored. As threats to hang the vice president filled the air, this ABC News photo shows curtains being drawn, Pence and his family hiding from the mob. Mike Pence, I hope you're going to stand up for the good of our Constitution, and if you're not, I'm going to be very disappointed in you. If Pence came, we're going to drag mother through the streets. The demands pressuring him to refuse to certify President Biden's win, the subject of Thursday's hearing. What the president wanted the vice president to do was not just wrong. It was illegal and unconstitutional. Testifying, the lawyer who advised Pence of his constitutional duties to affirm the election and disregard Trump's requests. Any comment on how today went? Meanwhile, just across the street, more rioter convictions this week. A father and son who climbed through a broken window and paraded a Confederate flag inside the Capitol. But some think it's vital the committee also discuss how was Congress and law enforcement caught off guard when predictions of storming the Capitol were made weeks earlier and gained massive traction online. And some police agencies did express concern over mentions of a bloody war and demonstrators concealing guns for possible use at the Capitol. Why was the Capitol so inadequately uh, uh, prepared? Uh, though those, those are important questions. And for that matter, was there a conspiracy to break into the Capitol? You know, what happened was a national disgrace. The committee also highlighting the assertions of one federal judge who said it is, quote, more likely than not that Trump committed crimes when trying to stop the certification. In Washington, I'm Scott Thuman. <laughs> Former Vice President, let's talk about the current one. Tomorrow, Vice President Kamala Harris and other White House officials are traveling to Pennsylvania. They'll be in Pittsburgh talking about the administration's historic investment to try to remove and replace lead pipes in that area. All right, that Harrisburg body shop that caught fire on Tuesday, apparently it's still smoldering. The fire crew is out there checking those hot spots over and over again. Officials say they've been at 7th and Emerald Streets every day since that fire happened. You see how much damage there? There's some of the smoldering. So no one was hurt here. Authorities are still working to find out how it all started. 
Well, it was up one day, but right back down. Look at these tough numbers here. Stocks sinking again on Wall Street, below 30,000 now, the Dow Jones. Investors may be taking a little bit of money off the table after one good day on the market Wednesday. Final numbers down 741 points, 2.4%. So we told you about baby formula. Well, now tampons. These are a few of the latest items that are now tough to find thanks to supply chain issues. CBS 21's Jessica Babb shows us what's next and when will shelves start to look more normal again. Experts say as these supply shortages continue, we'll feel the biggest impacts on the items we use every single day. Necessities like toothpaste and other hygiene products. We've had things, simple things like dog food that we can't find. A supply chain struggle. I am a director of an early education center. We can't buy formula in bulk. Um, we're scrambling to get formula on a, on a daily basis. With no end in sight. It's a little frustrating and it's getting really hard to to get what we need, but it's gotten progressively worse. So which items could be next? First of all, the things that go uh, short are necessities of life, quite frankly. Things we use every day. Hygiene products, uh, those sort of things. Uh, I would imagine toothpaste is going to become an issue soon. He says the supply shortages are widespread, hitting everything from cars to electronics to food in addition to other things like baby formula and tampons. But in some cases, we might not need the product as much or we can buy something else instead. You know, no one uh, is noticing that perhaps uh, potato chips are, are becoming harder and harder to find, perhaps. We may not notice that as much because we can shift to, you know, other snacks uh, quite, quite quickly. And so the the demand gets spread out among other products. He says at the root, a big reason for the supply shortages is transportation. It's the transportation problem that we can't get goods from point A to point B. Uh, we don't have people willing to drive trucks, etc. Especially here in central PA, where he says most of our goods travel by road and by rail. But even in some of the larger ports nearby, like in New Jersey and New York, well, it seems that now, as I see it, at least on the East Coast, uh, the ships aren't even coming. With transportation issues, it's a trickle effect. Manufacturers can't get the supplies they need. If they have the items made, it's hard to ship them out. But if they do, items still struggle to make it to the stores. You don't know what's going to be what they're going to be short of um, before it actually happens. Um, but so it is a little scary. I'm getting a little nervous about it. No one is coming up with a solution to these problems. And problems generally don't go away on their own. It's not clear how long these supply shortages will last, but experts say one thing all of us can do is to reduce how much we consume whenever possible. In Harrisburg, Jessica Babb, CBS 21 News. First had a two-year hiatus because of COVID, but it is back. The largest, longest running one-day street fair on the East Coast, maybe even the country. This is where we find Jasmine Brooks at Jubilee Day. Hey, Jasmine, your first time there. Hello. Yes, it is my first time here, but I'm taking it back to my roots because I don't know if you know this, but I was an ice cream maker like back in the day. So this sign right here is 30 years old. It's hand painted. So nostalgic. And the story behind this vendor is so cool. We're at Get Dairy Cone. This is Paul. Hi, Paul. How's everyone doing out there? Wonderful. I love this story. You came from Florida and you only have this mobile unit and it's a family affair. Family business that started in the late 60s. We've been selling ice cream up and down the East Coast for you know 50 something years we've been coming to Mechanicsburg for 30 plus years folks so I am getting a dipped cone so first we're gonna start over there with the delicious vanilla ice cream and this is the hard part are you dad uncle hi uncle uncle who uncle Russ uncle Russ what are you doing for me here I'm dipping and rolling Okay. Sounds delicious. Classic vanilla dipped in chocolate and then this is really right here this is the money shot folks the money shot now listen what is your favorite fair throughout the United States? Oh, uh, listen, guys, we love coming to this event. I know. We, we yeah, love the good community. Answer. Listen, we love the community. We love the small town feel. But if I had to put it on it, Minnesota State Fair, it's hands down the best. Okay, so if you can't make it to Minnesota tonight, you come to Mechanicsburg. That's Jubilee right. Day is until 9 o'clock. Cheers. All right. Have a great weekend, guys. Enjoy that. And uh, we like that the weather is sticking. 
Oh, that smile. Oh, she's going to be enjoying that for a while, right? It is a weather worn day, though, so we are continuing to monitor the radar. How much longer can you enjoy Jubilee Day? That answer coming your way next from meteorologist Ed Rousseau. Hey everybody, meteorologist Ed Russo. It is a CBS 21 weather warn day to prepare you for the active weather that's to come as we go through the evening hours. Right now, much of the region get catching a break. Now, Franklin County saw some storms earlier, but you see that second line and all those orange boxes? Those are ongoing severe thunderstorm warnings over northwest Pennsylvania. So that is the line that is marching towards central PA and it looks like it's going to start affecting our viewing area. I'd say around or just after seven o'clock. So there you see the motion of the storms kind of moving to the east southeast. So still a little bit of a ways away, but the threat with these is damaging wind gusts, but could even get an isolated tornado out of it. So no surprise that the National Weather Service has a tornado watch in place until 11 o'clock this evening. And this system has had a history of producing some wind damage. We're going to time it out for you coming up in just a few minutes. Joel D. Bold action from the Federal Reserve to fight inflation. I'm Autrell Nashar in Washington with why it's only half the battle against high prices. All right, well, my ice cream might be melting, but you know what? I'm ready to go. It's Jubilee Day 2022. We'll see you in a minute. Jubilee Day is back, so, so many vendors, so little time, but Jasmine Brooks, she takes on that challenge. She's going to see it all. Hey, Jasmine. Hello. You know what? You can find anyone here at Jubilee Day. I found three models. That's right. They're from Barbizon. Hi, ladies. What's your name? I'm Sierra. So tell me the truth. You can actually win a shopping spree? Heck yeah. Okay. How do you do it? So if you actually come to Jubilee, you just have to come to our tent uh -huh. and fill out this little raffle ticket. Perfect. And then you'll be entered to win it. Models from Barbizon. This lady came over. Let's go to the fudge, by the way. Sorry, sorry. Uh, this lady came over to me. She says, Jasmine, you look so much better in person. You look older on television. So you got to come to Jubilee Day so you can see how young I look, right? <laughs> okay. Hi, Jeff. I don't mean to interrupt. How are you? Great. How are you? Wonderful. What do you got here? I've got some of the best fudge you'll ever taste. Would you like to try a sample? I sure would. Okay. Tell me a little bit about this fudge. Well, it's handmade in copper kettles. It's a grand, uh, grandparents' recipe from many, many years ago. It's not like most fudge you buy today that comes in a pre-made kit. Um, you can see we have unicorn poo. Unicorn poo? We have dill pickle. We have mango habanero. Oh. Oh, no, not we for me. Peach moonshine. Okay. But are you a coffee drinker? I love coffee. Ask anyone. Tell me what you think about this, because this has been our best seller. It's been wonderful today. We have free samples, so people sample all our flavors. It's called dark espresso. Dark espresso. Oh, my God. Mm. So dark and espresso-y. I just love it. You see how creamy and buttery it is? Yes. It makes a big difference when you use really good ingredients. Yes, like sugar well, well fresh cream pennsylvania cream pennsylvania butter and then sugar other uh, uh, companies use a trans fat like a palm oil uh, so this is a much better recipe which is why it's so creamy and buttery not that gritty overly sweet fudge you get other places all right my mother-in-law is watching so text me and let me know what you want okay where are you from we have 60 flavors here uh we actually make it in grove city pennsylvania just north of pittsburgh okay. but uh last year i think my wife and i spent more nights here at a harrisburg hotel than we did in our own bed because we're at almost every event in the harrisburg area so it's great to be here in Mechanicsburg today, and uh, the crowd's been great. It's a little warm, but you see our fudge doesn't melt, so it's just a fun time and glad to have us. Okay, really quickly, what's your name? Josh. How do I win goldfish here? Where did you get these things? Down on market, take a right. You can win them for $5. What are their names? Sashimi and Connie. Got it. Okay. Bye, guys. Stay cool. Joel D, back to you, and let me just get my ice cream. Thank you, Mike. All right, the, the dill pickle uh, fudge, I think we might want to try back here. Keep that in mind. Thanks, Jasmine. We'll see you in just a little bit. Mm. Hey, everybody, and as you clearly saw, Jasmine having a blast at Jubilee Day. The, the weather is working out for now. You can see on our sky cam, yeah, it looks pretty nice, but... There are more storms building off to our northwest, and those are the ones that have prompted our CBS 21 weather warn day. So let's show you locally what's happened over the past few hours. We did get quite a few strong thunderstorms develop over Franklin County earlier. 
but they've dissipated. Now we've got round two that is on the way. Well, it's technically round three if you count this morning's wave of storms that produced a lot of loud thunder for many of you. So this is the second line here pretty much from north central Pennsylvania all the way back towards the Pittsburgh and Ohio area. These orange boxes are all severe thunderstorm warnings. They're ongoing. So as we put this into motion, you can see that line starting to move to the east southeast. So I think by seven, eight o'clock, we're starting to see this line impact our northwest counties like Mifflin and Juniata. And then the threat is going to evolve from north to south as we go through the rest of the evening. So many, many wind damage reports across northwest Pennsylvania, Erie, Crawford, Mercer counties or Warren counties rather. And as we head south, notice this red area. That's really the, the highest threat zone. So basically that means we have the highest chance in this red area to see uh, damaging wind gusts. And of course, that's not the only threat. We've got uh, gusty winds or heavy rain, rather hail and even an isolated tornado, not out of the question with the stronger storms. That's why much of the area or the entire area for that matter is under a tornado watch until uh, until 11 o'clock tonight. But you see how hot the air is over Ohio and West Virginia in the 90s. And for us, we're in the upper 80s. So all these storms are riding that temperature boundary between really warm and really hot. That's how these storms like the track. And there's the cluster over northwest Pennsylvania. Watch what happens as we go through 7, 8 o'clock. It's moving right through the viewing area. Might even be a little bit later than that. And that might actually be Good news in a way because that will allow the storms to weaken because the sun's going to be lower in the sky at that point. Uh, but they continue moving on out of here. I think by 11 o'clock the storms are for the most part south of us. And as we go through Friday and Saturday looking a lot sunnier and less humid, it's going to feel very, very nice. So the timing, we've moved it back just a little bit. We think thinking uh, 7 to 10 p.m. really is the time frame where we're going to be seeing the best chance uh, for these severe thunderstorms to move through. And again, the main threat is damaging wind gusts, hail and, and heavy rain are secondary, and even an isolated tornado, not out of the question, but certainly not the main concern. 70 for tonight, so it's going to be muggy even after the storms move out. And tomorrow is actually going to shape up to be pretty hot again, but it's not going to be as humid. So you're going to notice the humidity falls throughout the day. It's going to feel muggy in the morning, but it's going to feel nice and comfortable during the afternoon. And then we've got uh, less humid weather continuing for Saturday and Sunday. Father's Day still looking absolutely phenomenal. And then we're looking at uh, summer, the first day of summer on Tuesday. And that could come with the chance of thunderstorms. And then Wednesday and Thursday still looking at that threat uh, for some storms. It does look like it's going to be kind of hot as we head yeah. into the middle part of next week. Jasmine just texted me. It is steamy there, she yeah. says. Is that is that because it's getting ready for something else it's to happen, getting, right? It's get, getting ready. The atmosphere is ready to ring yeah. itself out. Yeah. And it certainly will this evening, but hopefully after everything's done. Safely, we hope yeah, so. All right, safely. thanks a lot, Ed. Right. And so, yeah, if you want to see what's happening with us, you go to the app. If we want to see what's happening with you, you got to chime in with us. So we're looking forward to some of your pictures. Safely get those, of course. CBS21.com is the place to be or our CBS21 News app. Who knows? Your pictures could be on tonight. Over the past couple of months, we've seen prices soar due to so much high demand for all kinds of goods and services. And this week, the Federal Reserve hopes to cool some of that demand. But how will that really affect inflation? Dr. Al Nashar looking at that and more in D.C. The biggest interest rate hike in 28 years, part of the Federal Reserve's action plan to fight inflation. We have both the tools we need and the resolve that it will take to restore price stability. Fed Chair Jerome Powell acknowledging, though, there are factors out of the central bank's control that will play a role in determining whether inflation, currently sitting at 8.6 percent, can be brought back down to their 2 percent target. And there I'm thinking, of course, of commodity prices, the, the war in Ukraine, uh, supply chain, things like that, where we really can't, we really can't uh, the monetary policy you know, stance doesn't affect those things. The Fed doesn't have the tools to stop Russia's war in Ukraine, where about 10 percent of global wheat exports come from, according to the U.N. The cost of wheat products in the U.S. are up 11.6 percent from last year. Food prices across the board going up as the war and related sanctions dwindle supply of fertilizer and other chemicals farmers need, as Russia is one of the top three exporters in the world. It's hard to believe in a year and a half things have gone up as much as they have. According to a report by Bloomberg, the U.S. government's now urging companies to carry more Russian fertilizer. 
The president also calling on oil and gas companies to produce more, a clash emerging as they disagree about what's driving up fuel prices. A meeting with executives at the White House slated for next week. Supply chain disruptions from the pandemic aren't going away. A shortage of workers, raw materials and high transportation costs make it difficult and expensive for retailers and manufacturers to get the products they need, products people just can't live without. A shortage of feminine products, the cost of pads up about 8% and tampons up 10% in the last year. According to data from Nielsen IQ, demand for all of these likely to go unchanged by the Fed's actions to cool the overall economy and need different solutions to meet that demand. In Washington, I'm Atra El Nishar reporting. And as we've been reporting, it is a weather-worn day here at CBS 21. Radar right behind me. We're going to get a closer look at this from meteorologist Ed Russo.